Bowen County. I've, I've seen it. Through the years, people have found it. And it's growing all the time. It's being multiplied. And every 10 years, it, it's got to increase a minimum of 25% more every 10 years, just as fast as you could expect. And, and it, if you don't believe it, it, it's like when I was a young boy, I'd, I'd see the potato trucks backed up all the way where the new post office is all the way up to the traffic light in the street on 59, waiting to get unloaded on Cordy's potato shed. And on the other side, they'd be backed up from the depot all the way north to the next block, waiting to be unloaded. That, that was the demand for labor. And, and we had a lot of a lot of uh, men that were working on the potato shed when I was a boy, they were hoboing, so to speak. They'd grab a train on the train sack and hang on to the train till it was coming to Baldwin County. And they'd come down here for work. That was, uh, there was no work in a lot of communities. And I saw a lot of that as a young boy. And, uh, and I saw the time that people were actually begging for something to eat. There was no money. There was nothing, so to speak. And they'd do most anything for a job. And uh, we, we saw a lot of that right here in Bowen County. I, w I would say I never wanted to leave it. I was happy I was right here. I, they had a hard time talking me into going to Auburn. I, I, I was happy and uh, I was doing all right. I had a pretty good job. And uh, I, I remember when grown men, the manager, so to speak, of my daddy's grocery store, getting seven dollars and a half a week. And the, the butcher was getting eight dollars a week. And, and they were buying the cars and so forth and paying their grocery bill and all out, out of seven dollars and a half a week and eight dollars a week. Uh, Raymond fell. Raymond's deceased now, but the old Fell family was well known. And Rodney Fell, uh, they were both butchers. And Rodney was working at Childress's Childress Market. And Raymond was working for my father. And then Raymond joined the army in World War II. And he ended up retiring out of the army. And, and I... I've seen what it was. I, I was working in Lawrence Flam shop for 15 cents an hour. Uh, Jack Edwards was our congressman from Mobile District. We were in that district at that time. Used to, in old days, our U.S. congressman lived in Troy with, with George Grant. Back in, in the early days of my political career, uh, I, in fact, the matter of George Grant, they were, we got the word they were going to build a new post office south of town. And uh, I went by and told Cecil Chase and our city attorney what they were talking about doing. Uh, building a new post office south of town. And, and uh, George told us, said, well, you get another piece of ground and call me back. Well, Frank Sanders owned the lot up here across from the Baptist Church. 
And uh, we, we talked to him, would he sell it to us? Or, or we needed a right to purchase. And we did. And he sold that where the old post office was on the north side of the firehouse. We bought that property for $7,500. And, and uh, told him we had an option to buy it then and, and, and in a perfect spot for downtown Foley. And the post office stayed there for over 30 years until we moved to the new one. Then after getting the post office, the roar industry, are, are back there when they, they put roar out there by, uh, we already had Foville. Uh, Foville was down here on Isaiah Street. And we already had Foville and there were 300 people working in Foville at one time. And that, that was a big industry. Then roar, was a governmental contracts is what they were dealing with. And uh, through Jack Edwards, he convinced them they need to put that factory in Foley. And, and so they put Roar out there. And, and uh, then it's changed hands several times through the years. And now then, there's a plant out here joining the Foley Airport with over a thousand employees. And and Foley just keeps growing. Every time you turn around, it seems like something else shows up and wanting to come to Foley. And the same way with, with uh, uh, the sign company up here, Vulcan Signs. We were at a League of Municipalities convention in Birmingham, and uh, Max Foreman, Max was on the city council at the time, and he had been treating, treating cattle at Bob Hall's farm. He owned Yupon Farms at the time, Magnolia Springs, and he'd been uh, uh, talking to Bob Hall about building a golf course down there. And Bob told him, said, well, he got, he's involved in this little plant in Birmingham he needs to do something with. And so we were going to Birmingham the following week or two. And they set it up for us to visit them at, at Birmingham down on the railroad tracks. And so far out at the bottom of the track was, are the tin on the side of the buildings up there were rusted out all around. Well, Dean Hanson, Max Foreman, myself, I'm trying to think who else, Dr. Foster, on Monday morning, we, we were to meet them at, at their plant in Birmingham. Well, we all had our golf clubs too. And so we went and visited the plant and then went to the Oak Mountain State Park to play golf. Well, that afternoon, as we were coming back in the hotel, we ran into the mayor. Henry Carson was mayor at the time. And, and uh, Henry jumped on us boys. He says, Guys, turn, what you boys doing? You shouldn't be out playing golf. You're supposed to be at a business meeting for the Alabama League of Municipalities. And sort of chewed us out. Well, two weeks later, Cater Lee, uh, Walton Vines, and Jim Johnson came to Foley, looked the site over up here, which we offered to give them that site if they built a building and employed so many money. And, and they came down here 
and and they built the first building up here where Vulcan is now. And see what has happened, developed, but Cater really wanted to go to Georgia. He was a Cater, uh, Georgia boy. But they built that plant here in Foley. And then later on, we, we offered the county commission their site where they built the, uh, I didn't think the county would ever move out of Baymanet. But that's when they decided they're going to build one in Fairhope and Robertsdale. And, and that's how we got the county commission to split up. The League of Municipalities, we were out in Las Vegas, the council was, and, and so forth. And I told them, I said, well, we're this close. We need me to go visit, uh, uh, what was to go visit Roar, really. And uh, so we went over to visit Roar, and uh, the, the board was there going through the plant, and they asked us to join them. So, so we joined the uh, Roar group going through their plant in right outside of Los Angeles. And uh, any, anyway, Roy Grimmett, he, he was a government man. He, he worked their contracts back and forth to Washington all the time. And I called him, Roy Grimmett up and he set the program up for us to go visit them the next day. So we did. We, for $252, I got four round trip tickets from Las Vegas to Los Angeles and back to Las Vegas. And, and you got regular flights out of uh, Las Vegas to Los Angeles. You know, they won just about every hour, but anyway, we we got over there to Roar, and and um, Art Art picked us up, and uh, we went to the plant, and we joined the group touring the plant. Then we went to the cafeteria and had lunch. And after eating lunch, well, let's go in the office. And we'll talk a little bit. Well, we went in the office to uh, talk, talk to the executives of Roar, and the first thing the chairman of the board said, it's sure great to see you folks here visiting us, but we're not doing anything else in Foley, Alabama. We didn't even know they had planned on doing anything else in Foley. And after discussing this but with the authorities of Roar, well, what, what was the problem? And then one of them said, well, he wasn't going to prison. The other one said, well, he wasn't either. And the problem was they had signed for a federal grant to double the size of their plant, uh, but they, in signing the application, they said they were not able to expand it unless they got that loan. And, and that, that was the, the bad part about it. Well, while I was sitting there, I, I got a call back from Jack Edwards and a call back from Senator Heflin. And, and they both told me, says, tell them to withdraw their application. And, and we did. They withdrew their application and applied for it through the state of Alabama. So, so 60 days, 60 days to that date, they were in Foley, Alabama with shovels in their hand and doubled the size 
of that aircraft plant in Foley. They, they got their loan approved, but it, but it went through the Alabama Development Office is, is how they got their loan approved. But, but uh, and you see, it's been sold three times since. And now there's over a thousand employees and what this big new Airbus plant they got in Mobile, they're doing a lot of that work right here in Foley. And, and it, it just seems like everything's working for the betterment of Foley. And just like Fairhope, Bowen County growing like it is, but people are wanting to move over on this side of the bay and live over here and work in Mobile or, or Bowen County. And, and Bowen County is in for a rapid growth. All your farmland, it used to be potato country. There's not that many potatoes growing in Bowen County anymore. There's still quite a few over on Barnwell area, but, but the rest of the county, you don't see anything. No soybeans, but they're growing a lot of grass for the commercial development of homes. They have to have the yards landscape before they can get loans approved. Well, when I was chairman of the State Aeronautics Commission, uh, we were having to pay $15,000 every time we had a canal field bush hog. It belonged to the state of Alabama. And, or, or to the aeronautics department, really. And uh, we were trying to get rid of it. Yeah. And, and it was a former Navy field is how, how the state of Alabama got it. And, and as a Navy field, it, it was something like $3,000 for the, about 300 acres there on the north side of the canal. And uh, we're paying that for it. Well, I went, went to talk to Dr. Norton. He was mayor of Gulf Shores and told him that the city of Gulf Shores need to buy that. Well, he didn't know why. They didn't have that many airplanes coming in Gulf Shores at the time. But I said, with that much area paved, and look what good ground it is for an industrial park or something else. Well, he, he just didn't see where Gulf Shores needed it. But finally convinced they should buy it and did buy it. And look at it today. Now it's, what, the fourth largest airport in the state of Alabama. And the, and the, the, the commercial, they're, they're, they're putting a commercial tower at Gulf Shores now. And, and that is where the, the, there's so much foreign traffic in and out, and there's a potential of getting a commercial line to run out of Gulf Shores. And and it it I I used to as a pilot, I used to use Foley Airport, but I'd have either Pensacola or Mobile guide me into Foley. And and with radar the way it is today, it's easy enough they they'll know where two or three hundred feet you are. Yeah, in an airplane, and that, that on on your receiver box, they'll tell you where you are. And one time, I thought I was going to crack up with another pilot uh, that was taken off in an air coop, what you call the air coop, and um, you'd be surprised who I was flying with. But anyway. Uh, I didn't think we were going to get over uh, that strip of water on the west end of that airport. That was Oak Airport. It was on the highway this side. 
But Pat Caldwell, who flew B-17s, had his pilot's license. And that's one reason he was so fast getting up in the Air Force during World War II. He was a pilot when he went in the service. Well, the main thing is convincing people what a beautiful beach we had. And now then they've found it. And look, look what it is today. And same way with Orange Beach. Who would have ever thought Orange Beach would outgrow Gulf Shores? And uh, that, that's where I, I was trying to get Foley going south. And, and some of the people in Gulf Shores didn't like it because I was so protective of going south. And uh, they said they had no way to go. They were wanting to go north. And uh, yet they weren't interested in the Fort Morgan area. They were mainly wanting to go north. And, and that's when Orange Beach Incorporated had them blocked from going further east. Really, really that's where they should have done. But, but the state park, a, a state park had all that area blocked from them going further to the east. At one time, not when I was young, but I, I was involved in buying property at Orange Beach. Uh, we used to rent a cabin at Orange Beach for seven dollars and a half a week from from Emmons Brown. And uh, they had a little country store down on the corner and they did other business with my father, but and uh, then, then when uh, Bill Morrills, we rented a cabin for Ms. Cheney, his uh, relationship there, cousin, I believe. And uh, it was reasonable enough for us to rent a cabin back then. The, the old Foley, J.B. Foley family, uh, came down from Chicago. They had Foley's Honey and Tar patent medicine in Chicago. And, and they did real well with it back in the early days. I say early days. I mean back around 1915 or something. And they bought thousands of acres of land here in South Baldwin County and Magnolia Springs. Uh, for tax money or less. And, and that's, that's been high, uh, handed down from the original. I never knew the original old Foley people, but I, I knew, uh, yeah, but I knew JB's older brother uh, that, that, that was Mr. Barker was a chauffeur out here, and they lived in the colonial home. Uh, and they had an office on the corner south of uh, the uh, Kaiser, Texaco, right there was old Foley office. When, when Burton Foley, Burton Foley, he, he was JB's older brother. And he died. He he was not married, but Mr. Mr. Barker was his bookkeeper and all. They're down here with them. And uh, but anyway, from Robertsdale South, they bought thousands of acres just for tax money in Magnolia Springs, and their original. Uh, Land dealing was Magnolia Springs Land Company. A lot of the old deeds has got Magnolia Springs Land Company. And then uh, Burton, uh, or J.B., he, he changed the name of the Magnolia Land Company. The de later deeds of property that I got here in town had Magnolia Land Company. But the older deeds would be Magnolia Springs Land Company.
Arthur Hope. He was my great uncle and namesake. And and his wife was a fresh corn that lived on 65 out here, where the Stein boy that got killed, that was the old fresh corn home. And uh, they were, I don't know where they came from, but uh, and anyway, they were related to my great uncle, the fresh corns were. And, uh, Anyway, he built a tagshire building in Foley. Mr. August Muir built a Foley Hotel building. And then, then uh, my, my daddy built his own building up on the corner, on the southeast corner of 98 and 59. He built that and that south 60 feet was our play yard when we were living upstairs. And uh, he wanted to build it himself because he felt like Uncle Art wanted too much money to build it. So, so my daddy supervised it. And uh, then Uncle Art built my daddy's home up north of town. And my cousin Ted built the butane building across the street. Uh, August Miller built that uh, armory building. And um, then, then different people built uh, the Schreiber, Schreiber boys used to be big builders. And uh, oh oh oh, uh, I think Jack Pilgrim and Bill Schreiber were together too one time building the house. And uh, well, of course, when you say it's a mile square, each each street around the original square mile was only forty feet. And it's caused a lot of problems for the city's growth, just being 40 foot street. It takes 40 feet. It takes really, as you know, probably takes 50 to 60 feet. We say 60 feet now, time you put culverts in and, and utilities. But uh, 40, 40 foot streets is a real problem. And that's what it was around town. Well, Magnolia Springs was, was really built by people out of Chicago and, and the Kaiser family out of Alberta. They came down here out of Chicago. And, uh, but Magnolia Springs you, you had the Hoarder family, and uh, they were they were down here in the early twenties, and uh, they built two brick homes down there on on the main street, East West Street, and uh, Mr. Little, C. C. Little, was vice president of the Crane Company, the bathroom fixture company. He, he built a place across the street from, uh, and Mr. Carpenter, Mr. Carpenter was the guy that patented the gym clip, gym clip. Now, the Brunels, where Jim Stewart used to live, they tore that house down, but uh, that was Brunel's home. And and then Mrs. C Mrs. Nellis was a Brunel, and she inherited that home. And Mr. Nellis was from New York, and he sold his stock before the Depression and got well to do off his stock market. And. Uh, 
What, what a lot of people don't know, Orlando, Florida is two degrees difference than we are here. Today, if you call down there now, you'd find out that two different, two degrees warmer than we are here. 20 miles below Orlando, you'll have a total new weather belt. Well, I, I used to paddle Mr. Gassenheimer from Montgomery, and, and he was a salesman for check writers. You know what a check writer, where you put your check in it for whatever amount, and you can't change the numbers on a check whenever you pull the handle down. And uh, he, when he came down here, he stayed at Sandy Land, which was a little resort beside the bridge at Magnolia Springs. And uh, Mr. Sandlin would call me up, said, Mr. Gassenheimer's coming, and he wants you to paddle his boat for him. And I'd do it for 50 cents a day. But I enjoyed watching him catch fish and me paddling the boat for him. But he'd fish a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the afternoon. And I'd go back on Sandland's porch and sleep while, while he was sleeping. That, uh, but that was big money to me. I had money. <laughs> the beauty has always been here. But, uh, for instance, I, I went with two of my friends uh, in the late 40s. Oh, no, it was in the 50s, Mifflin Road. And we got down to Mifflin Creek. And we had a chance to buy that 40 acres at the corner there. 40 acres for $4,000. Uh, and I, I told them I didn't want to get involved in it because there wasn't any bridge, no streets to get to it. And then, then they decided to build a bridge across the creek and, and just think where all those houses are on that corner now. Uh, we could have tripled our money there. But Frank Smith and Wayland Woodson and I got in a rowboat over at, at, at the ladies across the, on the east side of the bank there. They rented boats for a living. And, and I got a boat from them and went over on the other side and started walking around in that ground over there. And uh, that was some of the Clark estate that they ended up buying. Oh, Mr. Clark was an old bachelor here in town, and he bought a lot of land around in South Baldwin County for taxes.